Hey, my name is Jim Fahad and in this tutorial, we will be creating this amazing blog together in 10 simple steps that anybody can follow. This blog has a beautiful header with navigation menu and social media icons. It has featured posts and email subscription option. It has blog posts that are clickable, sidebar with category posts, sponsor ads, space for linking to other websites, and a clean footer with Instagram integrated. So, when they upload any picture on Instagram, it will be shown on the website automatically. When you click on a blog post, that will take you to the single blog post page with categories, titles, date, the big featured image, and with the real blog content. Underneath, social sharing option and related posts from the same category. Also, the sidebar will be there on the all pages. It has different category pages where only those specific category posts will be shown. It has a minimal looking contact page. Also 404 page if anyone puts a wrong URL. For sure this blog website would be 100% responsive for mobile and tablet devices because it's super important. Another cool thing about this blog is you can fully customize it the way you want. In this tutorial, we will create a recipe blog for example, but you can easily transform it into a yoga blog or any other blog. If you see other videos on YouTube, they just use a ready theme with very limited options. This actually separates this video from other generic YouTube videos. It's 100% customizable. By using Elementor's latest feature, you can create anything. Any heading, text, image, buttons. You can change the styles and colors with your brand color. And you know what? We will be doing all of this just by drag and drop. We don't need to know a single line of coding. I'm a professional web developer myself. In an out of the marketplace, I have done hundreds of blog website projects for my clients. In this tutorial, I will show you the exact way how I create websites for my clients. So you are basically learning from a real web developer. I have prepared a few things for you, a few templates that you can use, but still you can customize them the way you want. Like I said before, we will be using WordPress and Elementor to create this amazing blog. Here WordPress is free and Elementor Pro costs only $5 per month. So you can run this amazing blog for under $10 per month. It's really affordable compared to other competitors on the market. And let's say if you want to hire a professional developer to make such a professional and functional blog, that will cost you a minimum couple thousand dollars. If you can afford it, please go ahead, you can even hire me if you want. But I think if you just follow this tutorial, it would be a much better investment for most of the people because it's fully customizable and it's not very expensive at all. By the way, there is a good news if you are a freelancer because I will be providing all the resources like images, templates and stuffs. So you can fully replicate this blog website and keep it as a portfolio on your own domain or subdomain. So as a portfolio, you can showcase that to your potential clients. And for everybody, there will be timestamps in the video so you can always jump into the necessary part you need. And before starting, I just want to give a big shout out to Reno from Living with Pixel for creating it first 4 years back. But I see that the content is now mostly outdated, so many things have changed after that, so I decided to do a great touch up with that. Okay, so I have actually listed all these steps here on jimfahaddigital.com. I will put this pages link in the description. So here you can see all the main 10 steps here I have listed. So by following these main 10 steps, we will be creating our amazing blog website. Also before starting these main 10 steps, we will have some preparations and actually all these preparations are super easy to follow. And you see some of the preparations are optional. So now let's start with the preparation number one, which is understanding blog structure and design plan. It's very important that you understand it. Also, I want to give you some confidence that it's not that technical to create a blog. I have actually created a very super simple version of the website only to make you understand what we will build in this tutorial together. So in your blog website, you may have other pages like your contact page or other page. But if you want to create any blog website, you must have these three pages. So you must have your home page, you must have your post page or single blog post page and you should have a category archive page. And here in this tutorial as we are using Elementor Pro, so it's really very easy to create a professional blog within less time. So if we create this header only at the home page, we can reuse the same header on our post page and also on our category page. 
Same for the footer. If we create footer once on our home page, we can reuse that footer on our post page and on our category page. Then let's say this feature area we want it only on our home page. And then we will have this two column area. So here on the right column we will have, I mean, we need to create this sidebar once. Then we can reuse this sidebar on the post page and on the category page. Then within this left column of the home page, we can see all the blog posts. Within the post page left container, we can see the details of that single blog post. And here within the left column of this category page, we can see all the blog posts, but from a specific category. Also, if you want to make your website very different from this tutorial, or if you want to match it with your own brand color and font, you can do that very easily from Elementor Pro's global color settings. You just need to change your colors and fonts from one place and they will be applied everywhere. In this way, you can create your own unique version. So our first preparation is done. Our second preparation is installing WordPress on new domain via Hostinger. So first of all, what is a domain name? Domain name is basically your website address like Facebook has Facebook.com, Amazon has Amazon.com, we have JimFahadDigital.com. Similarly, for your website, you need an address that will be your website name.com. And what is web hosting? Web hosting is the storage space for your website. All the images, text you will have in your website, all will be stored on your own web hosting. As you are owning your own web hosting, so there wouldn't be any limitation. You can run ads, you can upload any text or images, you can upload any theme or plugin you want, you are the in charge of your own website. Now, how to get your own web hosting with a free domain name? So first, just click on the very first link in the description below this video or you can just go to jimfahaddigital.com forward slash my host. And this will take you a special discounted Hostinger page. So why Hostinger? In my opinion, Hostinger is the most affordable and also the fastest web hosting provider available. Just have a look into all their Trustpilot reviews. People are super happy with their hosting speed, affordable pricing, and customer support. Now, from here, you can change the language if you want. Maybe you speak Spanish or Portuguese or Hindi. You can select your language from here. One thing I also do want to say is that this page changes quite often. In fact, they probably change it once a month. So if this banner or this whole interface looks different than this one, don't worry, don't panic. This happens quite often, it's the same website. Let's now scroll down a bit here. You will find all the different plans. By the way, here we can see three plans, but sometimes you may see four plans here, just don't panic because you can create your website with any of these plans. But as you are just starting out, I recommend taking this premium or this business plan. With both of these plans, you can create up to 100 websites. For example, today you are creating a portfolio website, tomorrow you want to create a business website, and the next week you may want to create an e-commerce website, so you don't need to purchase hosting each time. You can create all the websites within the same web hosting plan. So here with this premium plan, you will get 100 GB SSD storage. With the business plan, you will get 200 GB NVMe storage. And with all of these plans, you will get all the features like unlimited free SSL. So all of your websites would be encrypted and super secure. Unlimited bandwidth. So there wouldn't be any limit how many website visitors you will have. Free email. You can create hundreds of professional email addresses like info at your website.com or admin at your website.com like this. Then free domain. Yes, like I said, you will get a domain name for free. You will also get tons of WordPress features like one click WordPress installation, free automatic website migration. So if you want to move your existing website from another hosting provider to Hostinger, they will transfer it on behalf of you. How cool is that? Now let's talk about security. Personally, I'm very serious about website security and hosting it just nailed it with all the features like Cloudflare protected name servers, malware scanner, and all these. I have had very bad experiences with other web hosting providers. We have got so many malware attacks and we had to pay the hosting providers additionally to use their other security tools. But here in Hostinger, 
you are getting all the security tools for free. Alright, let's now select a plan. And like I said, you can take any of these plans based on your needs. So for now, I'm taking the premium plan. You can upgrade it later anytime. So click here on add to cart. Alright, let's just go ahead and scroll down. Right here, you are going to see different pricing options. Now, this is referring to how long do you want to host with Hostinger. So, we have 1 month, 12 months, 24 months, and then we also have 48 months. First of all, I don't recommend going with this 1 month plan because you see it's almost $12 a month, which is super expensive. We don't want that. My recommendation would be go with 48 months. So, for the first 4 years, you just need to pay $2.99 per month. That will save you in total $432. And then after those 4 years, you start to pay only $6.99 per month, which is, is still super affordable for a web hosting plan that can hold up to 100 websites. But if you want to start with 2 years or 1 year, you can click over here. And then in your first year, you just pay $2.99 per month. And you are still going to create up to 100 websites. And after that first year, you start to pay $9.99 per month. So the longer the first period, the more discount you will get when you renew the plan. So if you have the budget and you want to get the most discount possible, you can go for the 48 months plan. And after those 48 months, you start to pay around, you know, $6.99 per month instead of $9.99. But wait, there is more. If you just click here on continue, here you need to create your account. But you see all these fields are optional. You just need to select your country. Otherwise, I'm skipping this form because we can add these information later after creating our account. So let's scroll down here. You just need to put your email address. Here I'm writing my email address. Make sure to put your best email address because they will create your hosting account with this email address. Let's now click on continue. And here, like I said, I have got more surprises for you. So here you see it says have a coupon code. Just click there. And here if you fill in with my special coupon code, which is JFD10, and you click on apply, you will now get a total 78% discount. Can you believe we are getting super fast web hosting with a free domain name for the full year only for $32. What an amazing deal, right? Here at the left side, you can see different payment options. So you can pay using your credit card, PayPal, Google Pay, Alipay, or even you can use your cryptocurrency. Also, you may see more different local payment options based on your country. So here, let's just scroll down. Here, I'm putting my credit card information. Now, click on Submit Secure Payment. Then it will redirect us to the control panel. Let's set a very strong password here. Let's retype the password. Let's confirm it. Then you can see an interface like this. But let's say for some reason if you just got logged out, you can again just go to hostinger.com from the top right corner, click on login. Then here you just need to put your email address and the password you have just set. That will take you inside of the Hostinger dashboard. And here you see it's asking to verify our email address. And it's very important. So now I'm going inside of my email inbox. And here you need to click on this verify email button. So it's now verified. From this interface, you see it says premium web hosting. Just click on this setup button. You can see the same setup interface what we have seen at the very beginning here. From here click on start now. Let's skip this by clicking here. As we want to create a new website, so from here it says create a new website, just click on select. We will be using WordPress to create our website, so from here let's select WordPress. Here put your email address and set a very strong password. I'm giving mine. Let's click on continue. I don't want to add any plugins, so I'm deselecting them all. Let's now scroll down, click on continue. We also don't need any theme from here, so scroll down and click on skip. If you already have your domain name, 
you just want to transfer it in Hostinger, then you can select this option. But now, as you have got a free domain with Hostinger, so here I'm selecting this option, it says claim a free domain. So click on select. First of all, from here, you can select any extension like .com, .online, .link, .shop, but I'm selecting .com extension because .com websites look more professional and legit. But you can select any extension you want. And then within this field, you need to write your desired domain name. You can put your name or your business name, it would be your website address. So take some moment, think about it and put that domain name here. I'm typing here Jim Toots and let's now click on this search. It says domain is available, that's awesome. Let's now click on continue. Now we need to fill up some details for my domain registration. So here I'm selecting my country Bangladesh and I'm selecting personal. Then click on next step. Here I'm quickly putting my name and contact details. And now click on finish registration. Now click on finish setup. And then just wait a little. Here WordPress will be installed on this brand new domain name. You see the percentage here, we are almost ready to go. So we have successfully completed our domain registration. Now first just have a look inside of our control panel. So from here click on manage site. I know it may look overwhelming, but it's super easy. Actually you don't need to do a lot of things here within this C panel. Just do a few things. Let's go inside WordPress dashboard. So click on WordPress overview here. And from this place, just make sure this force HTTPS option is turned on. Then click on this edit website button. It will redirect us within our brand new WordPress admin panel. All right, so we have completed our preparation too. Our next preparation would be doing the WordPress basic settings. So let's now go inside WordPress dashboard. So here I will make you understand with all of this like posts, media, pages, appearance, all of this. But now before doing any other thing, the first thing I want to do, I want to clean up my WordPress dashboard because personally I love to work in a clean environment. So first of all, here we can see some notification. Just click on this X to delete them. And also let's minimize them just by clicking here. Or you can just open up this screens options from here. And one by one, you can just deselect like this and then again click on this screen options now i want to clean up my wordpress dashboard more so from left side just hover on plugins from there go to install plugins so here we can see some plugins actually they came with default wordpress installation but i don't want them so you can select them one by one or you can select all of them together by clicking here now from bulk action first of all i'm just clicking on deactivate then click on apply and then let's select all of them together from bulk action, click on delete and then click on apply. The browser pop-up says I'm sure or not. Yes, I'm sure. So just click on OK. Now all the unnecessary plugin has been deleted. Cool. The next thing I want to do, I want to change my password. So to do it from left side hover on users from there, let's go to profile. And from here, if you want, you can change your admin color scheme, like you can make it to light, modern or blue. Actually, it doesn't matter because only you can see it as you are the admin. So I'm just keeping it to default. And now from here, let's scroll down. You can change your first name. So I'm giving my first name Jim, last name to Fahad. And here you can change your nickname. So I'm just giving it as Jim Fahad. And this one is important, display name publicly as. So here I'm changing it to Jim Fahad. And then let's scroll down from here. If you want, you can change your WordPress profile picture and from under account management, let's change our password from here. So I'm clicking on set new password. So first of all, I'm just hiding it. And here I'm typing my new password. For the moment, it says medium, but I'm okay with it. So let's scroll down and click on update profile. Now I want to do a few basic settings. So from left side, hover on settings, let's click on general. 
Now here within this site title and tagline field, you can write anything, but I want you to write here something meaningful. What will help you to, un I mean, what your visitor will understand. Now here within this site title and tagline field, you can write anything, but I suggest you to write something meaningful, which represent your business. So here inside of the site title, I'm just writing here Jim's recipes. And here within the tagline, I'm just writing best recipes blog in the internet. And here I don't want you to mess with this URL. So just keep it the way it is. And here we don't need to do any other thing, but if you want, you can play with them. So from here, I'm just clicking on save changes. Now one last basic settings, but it's very important. So just go under settings and click on permalinks. So here always make sure the permalink structure is set to postname because it's good for search engine optimization. Also very easily human readable. Okay. So just scroll down and click on save changes. Now I want to make you familiar with two basic terms. One is the backend or the dashboard and another one is the front end. Okay. So as we are the admin of this website. So right now the place we are in, this is the dashboard or the backend of our website. And now from the left top side, if we just hover on our site name here, we can see visit site. I'm just opening it from a new tab. So here, this is the front end of our website. The whole world can see this portion of our website. By the way, here also at the top, we can see this black bar. We can see it because we are the admin of this website. So other people or normal visitor cannot see this black bar at the top. Okay. So this is the front end of our website. And here, this is the back end of our website. And also we can see this website like this. So if you want to change the look and feel of your website, you just need to change the theme of your website. Okay. So if you want to change the theme, you just need to go back to your WordPress dashboard. Now from left side, hover on appearance, then click on themes. Here we can see some default WordPress themes, but actually I don't want to use any of them. So from here, we can just click on this big add new theme button. And here you will find lot more themes. But actually here, I'm just looking for one theme, which is super lightweight. So I'm searching for Hello Elementor. The reason I'm looking for a very lightweight theme is we will be using the mighty Elementor Pro to build our blog website. So Elementor Pro will handle all the designing and look stuff. So I want a very lightweight theme only for the sake of having a theme. Okay. So here let's install the theme. So I'm clicking here on install and then let's click on activate. All right. So if we just go back to our list, we have also completed our preparation three. Now we can move to preparation four, which is to install Elementor free version. Okay. So to do it from your WordPress dashboard, from the left side, hover on plugins and then click on add new plugin. So here I'm searching for Elementor free version. So from this search bar, I'm just searching here Elementor. Here we can see the Elementor page builder. It says Elementor website builder. So just click on install now and then click on this activate button. Now from here, actually, you can just skip this onboarding. So from the top right corner, click on this X. Also, I don't want it to be here. So from screen options, I'm just disabling it. All right. Now, if we have a look on our list, our this full preparation has been done. Now our next preparation would be installing Elementor Pro. So to install Elementor Pro, you can just click here on Elementor Pro this link. Also, I will put this link in the description of this video. So just click there. That will take you to the Elementor Pro purchase page. And you see right now Black Friday offer is going on. So for sure you will get some extra discount. Okay. So from here, if we scroll down, we can see all the pricing here. And you see their price is really affordable. They have different plans. And I want to tell you upfront, in our earlier days to create any functional blog website, we had to do lots of design stuff, lots of coding stuff. But here Elementor Pro is a complete lifesaver. You can do all those complex stuff really, really easily without touching any code by using Elementor Pro. And like I said, you just need to spend around $5 per month 
because here the pricing you are seeing here let's say if you want to take the license for one website so you need to pay this 59 dollar this is for a complete year so per month if you just divide it by 12 you just need to pay five dollar per month if you just want to start out you can start with this one website license but i always recommend to start with this three website license or 25 websites licenses because by using elementor pro you are not just limited to create blog websites you can create almost any kind of website so let's say tomorrow you want to create an e-commerce website or you want to create any business website for yourself or for your client so you don't need to buy it additionally each time that's why i always recommend these plans and if you're a freelancer or an agency then i highly recommend you to take this agency plan personally i use this plan because you will have 1000 website licenses i use this plan because i need to do lots of works on my other projects and i use it on my all clients websites so take any of these plans which suits you best so let's say if you just want to take this plan click on buy now and you know from the checkout page you just need to fill up your billing information like your first name last name email address and then from here you can just pay using your credit card or paypal i'm not purchasing at this moment because i already have 1000 website licenses so you can just go ahead and get your license i will see you in the other side so right after purchasing Elementor Pro, you can get access to this Elementor dashboard. And now from here, from the left side, if you just go under this subscription tab, here you can see all the licenses you have. So here, like I can see here my Elementor Pro license with 1000 websites. So from here, I'm just clicking on this download zip button. So it will be downloaded on your computer. So basically, you will get a zip file like this. So we can now go back to our WordPress dashboard. Now from left side hover on plugins and click on add new plugin. From here this time click on upload plugin. Then click here choose file. Then select the zip file that you have just downloaded. Then click on open. Now click on install now. Just wait a little it will take a few seconds. Now click on activate plugin. So from here, we just need to connect and activate our Elementor Pro. So from here, click on connect and activate. And from here, just make sure this is your account or the email address what you have just purchased. So from here, make sure everything is checked and click on activate my license. So here is showing the license status to active. Cool. Now, if we have a look on the steps, so we have just completed this preparation installing Elementor Pro. Now we can move with this preparation, which is preparing global colors and fonts. All right, let's do it. So go inside WordPress. Now to set up our global color and typography settings, first of all, we need to create a page for sure. So from the left side, hover on pages and click on add new page. So actually I want to make it as our home page. So here I'm just naming it as home. Now from the top right corner, click on publish button. Click one more time on this publish button. And now I want to open up with Elementor page builder. So click on edit with Elementor. Let's just close this pop-up and I want to make you familiar with this builder. But first of all, let's just click on this gear icon and from here, just make the page layout to Elementor full width. So here's the fun part begin actually working inside Elementor page builder is super fun. But here at the top we can see this is the header and it's coming from the Hello Elementor theme. Also at the bottom we can see the footer is coming from Hello Elementor theme. Actually we will be creating our header and footer by using Elementor page builder. So for the moment just keep them out of your mind. Let's just focus on this area. This is our main canvas. So by using Elementor page builder, the way we will be creating our page, like here on the left side, you can see all the elements or widgets. Like here we can see heading, image, video, text editor, and lot more widgets here at the left side. So basically we will be just dragging this widget from the left side and we will be dropping within this right canvas. So in this way, we will be creating our beautiful blog or any kind of website. Okay, now before creating anything, I just want to show you how to set up the global colors and fonts. 
So first of all, just click on this update button to save our work and to go inside of the global settings, just click on this hamburger icon and here you can go inside site settings but before going inside site settings you just need to do one little thing from wordpress dashboard so from here let's go back and click on this hamburger icon again and i just want to exit from here so click on exit from here it doesn't matter just click on apply and click on leave so before doing the global settings I just wanna do one thing from here just hover on Elementor go to settings and here I just wanna disable the default color and the default fonts otherwise the global settings we are going to make from the Elementor theme builder that won't work okay so make sure you have checked this one also this one now from here click on save changes now we can go back inside of Elementor page builder so from pages go to all pages and here we were this is the home page click here on edit with elementor so let's now click on this hamburger icon from here go inside site settings and here first of all go inside global colors also you see on the right side we can preview the global colors here we can see the global typography here okay so let's start from the color so primary color I want to use a black color as our primary color you can select any color from this color picker or you can manually just type the color code so our color code would be hash 101010 so it's a deep black color then the secondary color and the text color I just want to keep the default and now from here the accent color actually I want to change it with our brand color so here the color code would be hash FF5C29 so it's kind of orange color and here I want to tell you about one design trick let's say if it's your brand color this orange color and if you put this color on your header and if you put red color on your website body and if you put black color on your website footer your website of course won't look good right that's why I always recommend to keep consistency on your website so one of the best ways to create consistency is using different shades of this color okay so to make the color shades you can just go back to gym digital website so from here with the preparation 6 I have attached a link so just click there on shades generator it's completely free so here you can basically paste any of your color code okay just minimize this ad and as soon as you paste your color code here it will automatically generate a few shades of that color here okay so let's go inside of Elementor page builder this was our brand color so I'm just copying this color code from here go inside this website now within this field I'm just pressing comment view or you can just right click over here and click on paste so here we can see it creates some shades of this specific color and if you I mean how many shares do you want so you can increase the shares number or decrease so I'm just keeping it 9 and now from within these colors I just want to use a light color and a dark color okay so first let's go inside here because just after this four color if you want you can create as many as colors by clicking on this add color so I'm clicking here the first custom color I just want to name it as accent light and the color code would be this color so just click over here you can see the hex code here so if you just click there it will be automatically copied on your computer so just go inside Elementor and within this color picker I'm just pasting the color code so here we can see the light version of the orange color and also here click on add color because I just want to take another color as accent dark so within this color picker first go to this website and I just want to take this color shade so from here let's copy it go inside here and I'm pasting the color code here so we are done with all the global colors we can just click on update to save now from top let's go back and now we can go inside global fonts and here I don't want to do too much things I just want to change the font family so first within the primary click on this pencil icon I just want to use my favorite font which is poppins so I'm just searching here poppins and you see 
it's instantly changed here. These are not real contents. We can just check the preview from here. And if you're not sure about the font family, and all these are Google fonts, okay? So if you're not sure, you can just go to fonts.google.com. You can preview all these fonts. All these are free and they're super lightweight. So your website won't be heavier. Okay, let's close it. And with the secondary one, I want to also use the same Poppins font and let's keep everything same with the text. I want to use the same Poppins font but with this accent. So accent is basically fonts for your buttons and other accent area. Okay, so from here, I just want to use Roboto condensed this font and here we can add a bit letter spacing. So I'm just adding here 0 0.8. Or actually we can just keep it default okay so from here let's click on update to save our work now let's go back and this time we have set up our global colors and global fonts now we can go inside of this typography just have a look how easily we can now manage everything okay so body color which means all the paragraph all the blog post all the text of your website so for that reason I just want to use a color that we already have set so text color i'm just selecting our text color then for the typography i just want to select our primary color or we can select the text color so let's select text you see all these are getting now poppins font but i want to do a bit of customizing so from here click on this pencil icon so you see it's automatically getting poppins i just want to make the font size to 15 pixel then from here you can also set up the global settings for your headings links so i just wanna use here heading two and three so from here heading two i'm selecting the primary color and then from the typography let's select the primary and now from here i just want to change the font size to 28 pixel and also i want to use a little bit of line height so i'm giving it in em and let's set it as 1.1 and then with the h3 um, selecting the same primary color for the typography let's select primary but here I want to set the font size as 20 pixel and then I also want to use h5 in our website so here I want to use the accent color and with the typography let's use primary but here I want to use the typography as 14 pixel and here transform i want it all uppercase oops all uppercase and a little bit of letter spacing maybe 0 0.8 would look great then the very last global settings just let's go back and from here we can go inside of buttons and here easily we can just set the typography as our accent also here the button color as our global accent color also on hover i'm setting the global color i mean the global accent color here so we are all set now just click on this update button to save all the global settings then from top click on this x if we now go back to our list we are done with our all major preparations and here are two more preparations these two are optional so let's say if you just completely follow this tutorial so you can download all the exercise files from here so basically after downloading it you will get this file here within i will provide some sections templates also all the images i'm using to create this website and then here's the preparation 8 it's also optional let's say if you just don't want to watch this whole tutorial you want to create your amazing blog website within few clicks then you can click here on this recipe pro kit that will take you inside here so if you just don't want to watch this full tutorial you can purchase it only for 15 bucks and there is also uh, an installation guide here it's only two minutes long so by following this two minute guide, you can just install this kit and your blog website will be up and running instantly. Not only this kit, if you just go to Kit Papa's homepage, you will get here almost all ready template kits for different websites. 
you can create your own website or your client's website also you can browse through these categories for example if you want a restaurant website for your client you can just looking for restaurant just go inside food and restaurant and from here let's say if you want to select this just select it and from here before purchasing the kit you can actually preview the whole website just click on this live demo you can preview the whole website how it's looking also you can check the responsiveness by clicking here on the tablet view or the mobile view so you can pre-decide everything before purchasing it and with each of the kit they have their own installation guide so by few clicks you can create your own or your client's website also they have their buy all plan so if you just go there so let's say if you're a freelancer or an agency and you need to do frequent work for your clients you will get all of their templates within this all access lifetime plan all right i will also put this pages link in the description so from here all these preparations has been completed congratulations now we are ready to go now let's start with actually step number one so which is the header and the menu part so let's now go back inside Elementor and first of all we just need to go back to our WordPress dashboard so click on this hamburger icon and click on exit. So here we will be creating our header as a template so now from left side hover on template and first of all let's now go inside of this theme builder. And now from here first of all we will be creating our header so here we can see this is header click on this plus icon. We don't want to use any of these blocks, so let's just close it. By the way, if you want to give this template a name, you can just click on this gear icon and from here, for example, I'm just giving it a name, header v1. And now we will be creating our actual header within this area. And here, I want to make you remember one thing. Whenever you will download the download resource, then basically we'll get these two folders. One is image. So within this folder, you will get all the images and also within the templates folder, you will get some templates of specific areas. All right. So now here, let's first click on this plus icon. I'm taking this first structure and you can give any height from here. So first I'm just giving here 280 pixel. Now also here I'm making the justify content to centered. So if you put any content here, that will be vertically centered in this place. Also, I don't want any space, so here I'm making gap value to zero. Now, let's go under its style tab here. I want to give it a background image. So from here, let's select the image. Now click on select files. So from within this image folder, basically we will be needing these images. Basically, I just want to upload all of them. So I'm selecting all together, then click on open. Now for the header hero, I'm selecting this image. Now click on select and here you can set the position. So if you want, you can make it to center right or center, maybe top left, but I just want to keep it as center center. Also here, repeat value to no rapid and display size. I just want to make it cover. So it will cover the whole area. Now within this area, I want to add our logo. So click on this plus icon here. We can see a widget. It says site logo. Just drag it inside here and you just need to click here on set. I mean change site logo. So I'm clicking there and you need to upload your logo here in this place. Click on this plus and I'm selecting the logo. So now from here, click on this X. Yes, I want to save it. So click on save. Now here we can see our logo, but it's super big. Just click over there, go under its style tab. First of all, I'm making it in pixel and let's make its width to 180 pixel. And also I want to add some space at the bottom. So go under advanced tab, unlink the margin. So only at the bottom, I'm adding 15 pixel of margin. So 15 pixel space has been added at the bottom. Now here I want to add some text. So click on this Rubik's cube icon. And here I'm just looking for this text editor widget, just drag it underneath here. And here you can type anything. So I'm pasting some dummy text. Now let's just make it center aligned. So go under style tab and make the alignment to centered. Then underneath I want to add a divider. So click on the Rubik's cube icon. And from here, here is the divider. Just drag it underneath here. Now I just want to make it to 60% and alignment to centered 
actually not percent we can make it in pixel because I want to make it really small so let's make it 60 pixel and from under style tab let's make it our global accent color and here wet let's make its value to 2 and gap value to 2 all right so this hero area is done now you also need to check how it's looking on mobile and tablet so to change the responsiveness of this website you just need to click on this responsive mode and from here first let's click on the tablet so on tablet it's looking great now we can move to mobile so on the mobile device everything looks great but i wanna show here some images as well like the recipe images on the background okay so to do it let's just go to the left side and i'm selecting this container so from under its style tab here i just wanna adjust its size or we can just keep it to cover but here go under layout tab from here i just wanna reduce its minimum height so let's make it 200 pixel only for mobile devices because here you can see a little tiny icon so this change will only applied on the mobile device on the desktop it will remain same and now here i want to show you another thing let's say on the mobile if you don't want to show this paragraph because it's not that much necessary so you can just click over here go under advanced tab and from here open the responsive you can hide it only for mobile devices you can still see it but when you can you will see it from a real device you can see it so if you just minimize it so on real device it will look like it on the tablet it's looking like it and on the desktop we can see it like this all right so let's just open it and click on publish so just click on publish and here we want to save this header as our global header so all other pages will have the same header so to add that condition click on add condition and here make sure it's selected to entire site now from here click on save and close now underneath this hero area i want to add a navigation menu and like i said i have already created that for you as a template so click on this plus icon actually it's not plus icon just click on this folder icon and from here click on this import template this top arrow icon then click on select file so basically you just need to go inside of these templates and from here you need to select this file it says navigation menu dot json so select it click on open and yep this json file is saved for us so i'm just checking here and click on continue also we need to enable the unfiltered file options so just click here enable and import so here we can see recipe pro menu so from here click on insert so here we can see the bar but actually we cannot see any menu here because we need to create a menu in our wordpress website because if you click on this menu you see it says we need to select one of the menus okay so for the moment i'm just keeping it saved so click on this update button now from another tab you can just go to your dashboard so if you just type your website name.com forward slash wp dash admin that will take you to your wordpress dashboard so from here hover on appearance from there click on menus so here you can create any menu and you can give it any name i'm just naming it as main menu and for the moment click on create menu and here you can add any page you want for example we only have now our home page so i'm selecting home then click on add to menu you see it's added within our menu so when we will have more pages you can add all the pages within this menu but for the moment i'm just creating a few fake pages okay so from here click on custom links i'm just putting hash url and let's say we will have later these pages so you can replace this url with other urls we may have different category pages so here i'm creating a breakfast page click on add to menu then here i'm creating maybe this one is for dinner and another page this one is for snacks category click on add to menu and here i'm creating one contact page menu item so click on add to menu and this time click on save menu now if you just go inside of your header template so we were here you cannot still see the menu because we need to refresh it so just refresh the header template and now at this moment we can see the menu that we have just created from this place so here is all the items and also let's just check its responsiveness so from here click on the responsive mode go to tablet so on tablet it's looking great if i click on this hamburger we can 
see all the items here also if i go to menu i mean mobile menu so from here we can see it's also looking great all right so we have completed our step one now we can move to step two which is the blog posts list so basically if we just have a look on the demo site now we will be basically creating this area so everything you can see on this left column so here we can see all the blog posts with the featured image all the details so in this step we will be creating this archive okay so to create this actually in our this website i mean this website we don't have created any blog post so first of all we need to create some blog post then we can design it the way it is here on the demo site all right so from here if we want to create some post from left side hover on post first of all click on all posts so here we can see a dummy post i don't want it just click on bin to delete it and now i want to create a new blog post so first of all here you can click on add a new post but just have a look by default you can see here wordpress editor or the gutenberg editor but i don't want to use it i want to use the classic editor so for that reason we need to install a plugin okay so from left side first of all hover on plugin and click on add new plugin so here you will find easily classic editor if you for some reason don't find it just search for classic editor so here you will find classic editor just click on install now and then activate it and also i want to install another plugin click on add new plugin and here i'm searching for duplicate so by using this plugin you can easily duplicate your blog post so here is the plugin yoast duplicate post and click on install now then activate it as well now i want to show you how you can create a real blog post so from left side hover on post and this time click on add a new post and here is a quick note you shouldn't write the actual blog post by using elementor page builder you need to write the actual blog post within this area from wordpress dashboard and then we will insert this actual blog post within elementor page builder you will see that very shortly so first let's create a blog post so you can give your blog any title i'm just pasting a dummy title and now within this area you can write your main blog post i'm showing you very shortly but before that here on the right side you can create your blog categories okay so just click on add new category let's say you want to create a category for all breakfast recipes so click on add new category then you can create more for example oops just write here dinner then one for maybe snacks click on add new category also maybe you can create one for maybe favorites okay click on add to new also let's create another one so i'm just naming it quick okay so all the quick recipes you can include within this within this category so click on add new category and then only the necessary thing we need is the featured image okay so click on uh, set featured image only for this blog post so for the first blog post let's select this image and click on set featured image and now within this area you will be writing your actual blog post so let's say this is a blog post so this is very simple it's just like google doc or word you can write anything in between this area so if you want you can make anything bold then if you want you can create any bullet point so just like point one then point two just like this and let's say if you want to add any media or image just click on add media then from here let's say you can insert this image click on insert post so you can easily insert any image here as well also if you want to make any heading so just i'm writing this is a heading so you can just select it and from here you can make it a heading three so in this way you can create anything you can insert any heading any bullet point any image so you can design your own blog writing by yourself now here within this area i'm just pasting some dummy blog content so here we have a few heading here we have got some bullet points here is some images okay so we are ready with this blog post now from the right corner click on publish and now from left side if we go to post to all posts here we can see our blog post and you may remember we have installed a plugin says duplicate so if uh, as we have installed that plugin here you'll find this 
option says clone so if you just click on clone that post will be instantly duplicated here or cloned here and then within this new blog post you can just click on edit so you can change this title with the new title and you can write here another blog post then for the second blog post if you want you can select only these two categories like that and also if you go here you can upload i mean you can replace this image with any other image for example this one so in this way you can create your next blog post really really faster so now i will be just going to all posts and by duplicating this i will be creating some more blog post and i'm doing it really quickly and coming back to you all right i have created all these blog posts now let's insert them within the home page okay so first of all from left side let's go to pages to all pages and here is our home page now from here click on edit with elementor so first of all you can see here the header we have just created globally now here within this area we will be creating our home page so first of all just to make sure click on this gear icon and from here make sure the page layout is set to elementor full width okay now first let's create the layout and just have a look on the demo website so here you see we will be creating basically two column so within the left column we will have this blog post and within the right column we will have our sidebar okay so let's create that structure click on this plus icon here i'm taking this two container structure this one and here i just want to add some space at the top so go under advanced tab unlink the margin here at the top i'm adding 20 pixel now with the left container let's select this one because i want to make it with bigger so from here i'm making it to 70 percent and the right one i'm making it with to 30 percent also with the left one go under advanced tab here i want to add some padding maybe 10 and only at the right side i want to increase it to 30. and now within this area click on this plus icon and from here i just want to insert this posts widget okay if you somehow don't find it just search here posts so you will find it here here is the posts just drop it here now we can see our all blog posts here i know it's looking kind of ugly but we can fix it really quickly so first of all columns so we can see here one two and three but i'm just making it to two column and post per page i just want to appear in each page eight posts and image position is perfect and here image size uh, I just have a look here you see these images are not too sharp they are kind of blurry so I want to make the image size to full so they will look much cleaner in high resolution and here image ratio we can make it to 0 0.6 and here within the single card I just want to keep this thumbnail this title and this area i mean this excerpt and this button i don't want this metadata so from here i'm just removing this meta information let's delete the date delete the comments and then from here with read more i don't want this chevrons to the right side so i'm just removing it now here as it's our home page so we will be showing here all types of post but let's say if you want to show only uh, some posts from a specific category then you can go inside query so here you can actually make the source so by default it's post so if you want to have this post from uh i mean from a unique category so you can just decide like term and then you can type here a category name so here i'm writing snack so if you just select the category snack so all the snack categories blog post will come here okay but as it's the home page i don't want it so i'm just closing it and i'm closing it as well now here let's do a little bit of styling just go under style tab so let's keep everything the default just go inside of content and here i just want to add some space so here with the title spacing i'm adding 12 pixel then i'm making the color to primary color and also typography let's make it to primary but here i just want to increase it to 20 pixel let's close it and then this button text so it's coming from this here read more so i want to change its color to accent then typography let's set it as the global accent but i just want to increase the font size from here to 14 pixel so right now it looks great but here just have a look this excerpt text are too big for this area 
so if i just go under content and here you see exact length is 100 if i make it to for example 50 for some reason there is a glitch you see the area is not reducing so for that reason let's just keep it 100 i have written a simple css snippet for you you can just go to gymfiledigital.com so this particular page so here if you scroll down you see it says excerpt title and line count so just copy this snippet from this place go inside elementor so here make sure you have selected this post widget go under its advanced tab from here open the custom css field and just paste the css code here and now have a look here this code is basically for counting the lines right now we can see the excerpts are in three line so that is basically coming from this area so instead of three if i make it to five you see they are now in five lines but let's just keep it to three lines and i have also written some code for these titles so right now you see all the titles are in one line and there is some three dots which means they have more text so that's basically coming from this area so here you see it says one if i just make it to two you see they are just going into two lines so i just want to go back to one line all right so we are done with this area just click on this update button to save our work now we can move to the next step so from here we have done this step two let's now move to the step three which is the sidebar area okay so from here we will be creating our sidebar within this right container so click on this right container this one first i just wanna make their gap value a bit bigger so here i'm making it to 40. now first of all just have a look here so here in the demo website you see this shape details i just want to keep it within a single container then this my personal favorite within a container then this is sponsored area i want to keep it within a container okay so to do it first of all i just want to take a container here click on the rubik's cube icon here i'm dragging this container here so within this container first i'm making their gap value to 14 and let's add some padding so go under advanced tab and here i'm adding 10 pixel of padding just unlink it because at the top i don't want any space so at the top i'm making it to zero now first of all click on this plus icon here i'm dragging this image widget and let's select the image i'm just selecting this image insert it and here from the style tab i just want to make their corner rounded so from here border radius i'm setting it in percent and i'm making it to 50 percent then underneath click on the rubik's cube icon here i'm dragging an heading element and i just wanted to say mark robber so this chef name and here i'm making the html tag to h3 as we have given some global style with the h3 now let's set the alignment to centered now underneath let's create another heading so just underneath here and i wanted to say pro chef and blogger and i'm making the html tag to h5 as we have set some global tag with it now make the alignment to centered then underneath here i'm adding the text editor widget here and we can paste some dummy content here go under the style tab i'm making the alignment to centered also with this one i want to add some i, I just want to adjust some spacing so go under advanced tab here with this one only to the left and right i'm just giving 25 pixel of padding also margin layers here at the top i'm giving negative 5 pixel of margin and at the bottom i'm giving negative 15. and now here i just want to duplicate this heading underneath this place so first of all okay just from the left top click on this hamburger icon you can easily go inside user preferences from here first of all just turn on this editing handles option and now have a look if i just hover on this pencil icon of any specific widget you can simply delete anything uh, by clicking on this x or you can duplicate it by clicking on this duplicate icon so i just want to duplicate it from here and now i'm just dragging it underneath this text in this area and now i just want to change the font family so go under the style tab from here from the typography from here i'm just searching for alex font alex brush this one so it's kind of looking like a signature all right now underneath this area i want to take another inner container just drag it underneath here so first of all here i'm just looking for the divider widget 
here we go just drag it inside here here i wanna add some text so i'm just writing here my personal favorites and here html tag i'm making them h3 now let's go under the style tab from here i'm making the color to accent color let's make the weight 2 and gap i don't need any gap so i'm making it to 0 then from the text i just wanna make them left aligned and also from typography let's make their size to 18 pixel okay now underneath this i wanna show some blog post so basically we can do one thing so from here you can just right click over here let's copy this blog post so here within this area put your cursor exactly in this place within this inner container right click over here and click on paste so we can see all the blog post has been pasted here in this area but i just want to adjust its design a bit so from here column i just want to make it to one column post per page i want to only show here three blog post image position from left and image width i just want to reduce it to 35 percent i don't wanna have this excerpt and here let's say i just wanna have some blog post from a specific category so from here open the query and let's say i'm selecting term i just wanna have the blog post from the snacks category so i'm selecting snacks so all the snacks blog post will just come here and we can just go under the style tab let's make the rows gap to 20 and then from here i just want to reduce the font size so the title size i'm just making them to 16 pixel and here also reduce the spacing to 5 and here you may remember we have added some css so only with these post css just click over this go under its advanced tab open the custom css field and here with the title line I just want it to be up here on two lines so it's only for this sidebar posts okay now underneath i wanna create our sponsor area so easily we can just duplicate this container from here let's duplicate it and here i just want it to say so from left side i just want it to say sponsor and here first of all let's delete these posts and here i wanna insert a call to action area so here i'm searching for call to action this widget just drag it underneath this heading just underneath here so you can change the skin i'm making it to cover let's select an image so from here let's select this image now let's open the content actually i don't want any description i just want a title so let's say it's an ad for kidpapa.com so here within the heading i just wanted to say create websites in minutes with kidpapa.com and here i'm making the html tag to h3 so it will automatically get the styles and here within the button i just wanted to say browse now and you can link it with kitpapa.com so let's just go to kitpapa.com let's say i'm just promoting this buy all option so you can just copy the link from this url go inside of elementor and paste the link within this field so now if anyone clicks on this button that will take them to this page okay so now from here i also want to add a ribbon so here for example let's say here i'm just writing 99 dollar deal and now let's do a bit of styling with it go under the style tab so we cannot see this text properly so i just want to position it here so but i mean vertical position to bottom and let's increase its height to 300 or a little bit maybe 320 pixel so in this way you can create the sponsor area now i just want to duplicate it one more time and here within this area let's say i just want it to say explore so here i'm writing explore and let's adjust this as well click over here and instead of this image from here i'm selecting this image click on select within the content I don't want any title so it will have just the button so let's say you sell some recipe course so here I'm writing recipe course so you can just link it with your recipe course so you just need to put the link here also I don't want any ribbon with it so just remove the ribbon and from under the style tab let's reduce the height to only 100 pixel 
also i don't want to use the same animation like the above so from here open the hover effects so i'm just disabling this hover animation from here set to none also this hover animation let's set it as zoom out so now if i hover you see it looks really great so we can easily just duplicate it here and let's say as it's your recipe blog uh, here so many shapes are coming so here within the content i'm just making here chef job so you can link it with any of your affiliated websites and with this button actually i just want to change its style a bit so just go under the style tab open the button so here the text color would be our accent color and the background color we can make it to white and let's just we can just copy and paste the style so just copy here click on copy with this one right click over here click on paste style but with the second one actually we want to change this image with this one so select it click on select now we just need to check if everything is looking great on mobile device so click on the responsive mode first go to tablet so on the tablet everything is looking great but here select it go under advanced tab here instead of 20 we can just add 40 pixel of margin at the top then with this left container we don't need this much space so select the left one and here we can give the padding value to 10. so other than that everything is looking great but i think we need to fix it so let's select it and here go under content here only at the tablet device i'm making the columns to one so they are now looking perfect so everything is looking great but i think we need to work with this area so let's select it go under its content so here actually we can just set its typography the font size we can make it in vw so it will always be responsive we can just make it to 1.7 or maybe 1.8 then from here let's open the box we can add the padding to 25 so right now it looks perfect and here you can also do the same thing so just select it let's say you don't want to show it on the tablet so go under advanced tab from here open the responsive you can make it only hide on the tablet device so just hide it it will be shown on mobile and desktop but not on the tablet devices okay so other than that everything is looking great just go to mobile device so let's start from top so here on mobile device everything is looking great but here i think we can add some space here so select this container go under advanced tab unlink the margin only on the mobile device at the top i'm adding 30 pixel of margin here and now let's scroll down here everything looks great and this font looks too small so just select it go under style tab from the content here i'm making its width to 4.7 only for mobile device so other areas everything is looking great on mobile tablet and desktop as well and of course don't forget to click on this update button to save your work now we can move to our next step so which is the footer so we can go to our wordpress dashboard now from appearance i mean from templates let's now go inside of the theme builder and here i want to create a footer template so here is the footer click on this plus icon i don't want to use any of these so click on this x and here also i want to just name it as footer v1 and here click on this folder icon because i also provide the template for the footer so click on this top arrow icon click on select file here is the footer json file select it open and here we can see recipe pro footer click on insert and here we can see our footer so you can just click over here you can change this with your own name you can change all of this also we have created this just click over it where you can see all these are list so if you want to change any of the link you can do that so just click over that and you can insert any link within this area okay so it's completely customizable you can change it the way you want also you're familiar with the social links now here in the middle of these two area here we can see some text it says instagram feed feed to so it's kind of bizarre text so here my goal is to show instagram images here within this footer 
and to make it happen we need to install another plugin so you can just go to your wordpress dashboard now from plugins click on add new plugin and here i'm just searching for instagram feed so here is this plugin smash balloon social photo feed it is by smash balloon so click on install now let's click on activate and here you need to connect your instagram account okay so first of all click on launch the setup wizard actually i don't wanna run this wizard so click on exit setup so now from here from under instagram feed go to all feeds here you can add a new so click on add new and from here keep it checked click on next from here click add source and here you need to connect your instagram account so here in my case it's personal and i don't want to receive the email click on connect with instagram so it will automatically connect your instagram account so now here click on allow yes it's my domain and here make sure it's your account name so just check it click on next and here i'm clicking no maybe later all right i don't want this setup wizard so these images are coming from my instagram feed and here actually i don't need this name also here at the bottom i don't need this button so from here i'm just making this header to disable let's go back posts okay let's go back from here load more i don't want them and let's go back from the follow button i don't want that so let's go back i just want the images okay so from the feed layout here i'm just making the padding value to one and desktop on desktop i want to appear eight image mobile the same and here columns on desktop i want eight columns but on the tablet and mobile i'm just creating four columns so just have a preview here so on the desktop it will look like it on the mobile it i, I mean on the tablet it will look like it and on the mobile it will look like this okay so let's just save it and from here click on embed so you will get this short code from here just click on copy now we can go inside of the footer and here within this field first remove it from this place and we can paste the short code we have just copied now you may see something is missing up here but no worries just save the work you have done and from here click on this publish button let's add a condition because we want to show it on entire site so from here click on save and close so now if you just want to preview it from here click on this eyeball icon and click on preview so here if we scroll down we can see our global footer also we can see the instagram posts you may see this area is looking kind of messy but no worries because as we are just previewing but on the real website you will see it correct all right so we are done with this step so we can move to the next step a uh, category page okay so we can go to our wordpress dashboard now from templates click on the theme builder as we want to create our category page so from here we need to select archive click on plus just close it and here i want to show you one interesting thing we can just go back to our uh, wordpress dashboard and from here let's go to our wordpress dashboard and go to our pages to all pages you may remember we have just created our home page so this is the home page let's open it using elementor click on edit with elementor and from here we have created all these a few moments ago now i just want to duplicate this page so from here on this six dots right click over here click on copy now go inside of the archive builder here the category page right click over here and click on paste you see it's instantly pasted within this page so now on this page i just want to keep this right sidebar but here instead of this regular post feed let's just delete it from here and within this page click on this i mean click on this rubik's cube icon from here i'm dragging this archive post within the left container and here you see you can get the widget it's exactly looking like the post widget on the home page so i don't need to recreate it again you can design it in the same way you have designed the post widget of the home page so i'm quickly just designing this area
Alright, so I have designed this archive post widget in the same way. Now I just additionally want to add a heading over here. So click on this Rubik's Cube icon and from here I'm just dragging this archive title here at the top of this left area. So here by default it says archives. So I'm making the HTML tag to H2. So other than that everything is same like the home page. So click on this publish button and here at condition. Yep. So we want to save it as all archives page. Click on save and close. Now have a look if we go to our dashboard if we go to posts to categories because we have created some categories like the breakfast dinner favorites. So if I now open this breakfast category page so click on view just have a look here. So now here within this archive page we can see all the posts which is under breakfast category. So all these posts are under breakfast category. I think we can add a bit of space here at the top. So let's go to archive and here with this one go to advanced. So instead of 20 let's add 40 and save it. Now just have a look. So instead of breakfast if I just open the dinner let's view it. So here we can see all the posts. We have only one post under dinner category but we can see it. It says category dinner. On the breakfast it says category breakfast. So we are done with this step as well. Let's now move to our next step which is the blog post page. So basically just have a look. Let's go to the dashboard and if we go to the post to all post and here we have got our all blog post. So from here if you just view this blog post. So I'm clicking on this view. Just have a look on this blog post. So right now it looks I would say super ugly right. Because our goal is to make this page look like this demo page. So here you see everything is looking much cleaner. So I want to make our single blog post page like this. So from here actually from our WordPress dashboard we can now go to templates to our theme builder. And here as we want to create our single post page. So here is the single post click on this plus. Let's just close it and in the same way we have created our archive page here we can go again inside of the our I, I mean inside of the home page Elementor page builder here. So here is the area we have created for our home page click on this six dots right click over here click on copy now go inside of the single post template now right click over here click on paste. So similar like the archive page I just want to keep this right sidebar. But within this left area, let's just delete this post archive. I want to design here our single blog post page. So first of all with this area, I just want to add some space at the top. So from here instead of 20, I'm adding 40 at the top. Okay. So now within this area, click on the Rubik's Cube icon here. I just want to add the category first. So first of all, let's drag this heading here. I'm making it as H5. And you know I just want to make it dynamic so from here I'm just making it to post terms and now click on this icon so I'm just making it to categories. And then if you want to adjust the global a little bit you can do just go under this style tab from here I just want to reduce the font weight to 500. And then here I just want to add the title so let's drag this title underneath here and I'm making the HTML tag to H2. Also with it go under advanced tab unlink the margin at the top I'm adding negative 10 and at the bottom I'm also adding negative 10. Now underneath this area click on the Rubik's Cube icon I just want to add here some post information. So just drop it here and I don't want this comment time or author I just want to use the date. So from here I also don't want to use the icon because my goal is to make it very minimal okay. Just now go under style tab go to text we can give its color to our global text color. Also if you want you can reduce the size to 14 pixel. Then here underneath I just want to add the featured image just here so you can see the blog featured image here and right underneath here whatever we have written by using the classic editor. So here is the post content widget just drag it under here. So underneath the featured image we can see the real blog post content here. Now right underneath this post content I just want to add the post navigation so this widget here 
and I don't want the title nor borders and instead of angle I'm just using chevron now let's do a bit of styling so here the label color would be accent color and here I just want to increase the weight so here and with the arrows let's make the accent color and I'm just making the size to 15 so it also looks great now from here I'm just looking for share button so keep it under this area and now from here view I just want to use icons and let's make the shape to circle now from under style tab I'm just making the button size to 0 0.9 and then color to the custom color and now primary color let's make it to our global accent color then from under advanced tab unlink the margin at the top let's add 20 and bottom I'm adding 30 all right now underneath here let's drag an heading element so just here and it's static I'm just saying here related articles and underneath here I just wanna put some posts related posts so from here let's drag the posts widget so from here I'm just searching for posts here we go just drag it here underneath and here we can see all the blog post but I just wanna copy and paste the style from home page so let's go to the home page so this is the post widget we have just designed so right click over here click on copy now within the single post page just right click over here instead of clicking on paste click on paste style so the style has been copied here but also from here I'm just making the image size to full also you know we don't want this metadata and of course I don't want these chevrons and here we can see all the blog post here and of course I don't want them all so post per page would be just four and here as these are related articles so from query I'm making the source to related and also I just want to exclude here the current post so it's really weird if you see your this current post in the related articles area so we are almost done and same like other templates if you want to give it any name you can just give it the name so i'm just naming it single post view one also let's check its responsiveness i believe it's already looking great yep so here is the single blog post page let's check it from mobile so on mobile also it's looking great so we can just click on this publish button and here click on add condition yep we want to use it on all singular pages and click on save and close so now if we just go to the front end and if we now go inside of any of the blog post for example if we just go inside of this blog post just have a look it's really looking nice the way we have just created it now I just want to do a few settings if I just go to our WordPress dashboard from here we need to do one settings okay so from here from the WordPress settings let's go to reading and from here your home page displays we need to select a static page and we need to select our home page as the home that we have just created otherwise WordPress won't automatically get your home page you have created as your home page so make sure you have selected your home page from here and click on save changes so now from front end if you just click on your logo you see you are now at your home page and here i want to show you just one quick thing you can just go inside of elementor page builder okay here is our home page opened so from any page if you just click on this hamburger icon now from here let's click on site settings then from here click on site identity you may remember you have added your logo from here so from this place click on site icon and here you can select this image and just make sure when you select your fab icon the fab icon should be in square shape so it might be 300 by 300 or 60 by 60 like that so basically this fab icon is the little tiny icon that will have at the top of any browser tab like here in gym digital we have this at the top of the browser so from here just select it and click on update now if you just go to the front end of your website and if you just refresh the page once at the top you can see the fab icon here 
all right we have now completed our step six we can move to the step number seven but here i want to tell you one thing up front this above six steps are enough to make an up and running blog website so if you want you can now make your blog live these next steps are optional but good to have these steps are only to show you how to do cool things to make your blog stand out so now let's start with the step number seven the featured post you can just go to your wordpress dashboard here so for the featured post if you we just have a look on the demo website on the home page here at the top you see we have already created this area this blog archive but here at the top you can showcase some of the featured blog post okay so i'm showing you how you can do it so from here we can again go inside of the templates to theme builder because to create this kind of custom looking area we need to have our own loop so from the theme builder we need to create a loop for that here is the loop builder so click on this plus icon actually this is a new addition with elementor it wasn't available before so click on x now here first um, clicking on this plus icon let's select this structure i'm taking the height to 300 pixel let's make the justify content to centered gap value to 10 and also let's add some padding so first of all i'm giving 18 percentage let's give it five percent but only the bottom i'm giving 10 percent and here is another interesting thing go under the style tab here i wanna add a background image and here we can give the background image dynamically okay so let's click on this dynamic tags and here select featured image now from here i'm making the image position to sender sender repeat value to no repeat and display image to cover and then i also wanna add a background overlay with it so from here i just wanna select the gradient so here for the first color i'm selecting a black color but i'm making it transparent by dragging this bottom bar to the left and here for the second color i'm selecting a black color or we can select our primary color this one so this black color is going from top to the transparent it's make this shade now within this area click on the rubik's cube icon here first i just wanna insert the post title so here let's drag it and i'm making it to h3 now from here i'm making its color to white color and from typography i'm just making its size to 20 pixel and here line height to 1.1 em also i don't want it to be centered so select this container go under layout i'm making the justify content to end so it's at the bottom now underneath this area i just wanna add post categories so from here let's add the heading underneath here and let's make it dynamic so from here post terms and i'm making it to categories and also from oops from here i'm making it to h5 all right now we can save it so click on publish but before that we can give it a name so from this gear icon we can name it featured post loop now click on publish so we can now go back inside of our home page and if you want to have that loop first of all you just need to refresh this page so from top click on refresh and now here in between these two areas click on this plus icon to insert a category i mean insert a container so from here click on this plus icon i'm taking this structure now here first i want to add 20 pixel of padding and here unlink the margin because only at the top i want to add 40 pixel of space and now within this area click on this plus icon and here i'm searching for loop so here is the loop grid let's drag it inside and here you need to select the loop you have just created so we have created the featured one so here it says featured post loop select it and here we can see the featured loop we can see other posts here as well so i just wanna make the items per page to three so only here three featured posts will be shown and of course if you want you can add some specific category so just go to query and you can here only select a specific category maybe your favorites category or your breakfast or any other category you get the idea right 
and then we can now move to the next step which is step number eight the email subscribe area so to add it go inside of home page so i want to add it within this area so click on this plus icon and here i also created a template for it click on this folder icon and here click on this top arrow icon click on select file here is the subscribe.json file let's open it and here it says recipe pro subscribe let's now click on insert and here we go so basically if you wanna have the list of your visitors so you can get that from here and here for the design if you just click over here you see i have done nothing crazy just select it because i had to make the column width to 60 percent because by default it's 100 percent so they will come to two different lines that's why i have made the column width to 60 percent and the button width to 40 percent and then for the functional part so if you just scroll down here you see actions after submit so here by default it will be saved within this wordpress website actually for this i don't want submission i also don't want it in email but if you wanna have this with any of your email marketing tools just like get response convert kit or mailchimp you can do that for example if you select mailchimp you will have a new tab says mailchimp so just open that and you will also find a link it says integration settings just click over there that will take you to this page so from here if you scroll down you will find all the option for mailchimp drape or active campaign all the api field here so you just need to go inside of your mailchimp account you will get the api key from there you just need to paste it here and click on validate api key so then if anyone fill up this form and click on subscribe button all the email addresses will be stored on your email marketing tools so all the email will be stored on your that particular email marketing tool all right let's now click on this update button to save your work we can now move to our next step which is the contact page so we can just go to our wordpress dashboard now from here we need to create a new page so click on add new page here i'm just creating our contact page click on publish now click on edit with elementor and here i also have created this page for you so first of all you just need to click on this gear icon from here make sure the page layout is set to elementor full width and then from here click on this folder icon click on this top arrow icon select file and here is the contact.json click open so here it says recipe pro contact click on insert so here all these are super simple if you want you can change anything or you can add any widget from the left side and on the right side this is our contact form so just click over that if you if you don't want this subject line or any other line you can just remove it from here and then from this place let's say within this button instead of the send message if you wanted to say any other thing you can do it from this place and here within the email field whenever anyone fill up this form where you want to get that email so you just need to put your email address within this field that's it very simple so just click on this update button to save your contact page and i think i forgot to show you one thing if i just go to the front end of our website we have created this menu but just have a look if we just go to our wordpress dashboard and here if we go to post to our all categories so we already have created all these categories and if we just click on for example breakfast or this snacks we can see the archive page for breakfast and for the snacks now here if you want to link them with this uh, navigation menu so all you need to do you just need to go inside of your wordpress dashboard go to your menus from appearance to menus and here you see it says breakfast so now click on this custom link you can just go to your breakfast archive page copy the url and within the menu you can just remove this hash and paste the url here okay so same with the snacks open it so here's the snacks category url go inside here and now paste the url inside here then click on save menu now if you go to the front end if you just refresh the page 
just have a look from this navigation bar if you click on breakfast that will take you to the breakfast archive page to the snacks archive page just like that now we can move to our very last step which is the step 10 404 error page so let's say this is our home page and if anyone just go to any single page for example on the single blog post page and here you see this url is looking like it but let's say if anyone instead of this they type anything wrong which is not a valid url and if they click on enter you see they can see a kind of broken page so they cannot understand which page is this so for that reason if anyone just type any wrong url there should be a 404 error page so people will at least understand this is a wrong page they need to go back to any valid page so to do it we can just go back to our wordpress dashboard now from templates let's go to theme builder and here we can also create the error 404 template so click on this plus icon and here actually instead of creating from scratch you can select any template from here so i'm selecting this template click on insert and then everything looks great so you can just click on this take me home this link and instead of this hash i just want to link it with our home page so if you just start typing home you can link it with our home page also with this one select it i just want to link it with our home page so select home and you see this color is not synced with our brand color so from here select it go under style tab from here i'm just selecting our accent color so if we now just publish it yep it's for 404 page click on save and close so now if we just type any invalid url here let's refresh this invalid url so at least it says page not found take me home so if i now click on take me home it takes us to the home page all right so we have completed our amazing blog website design now just go ahead and make your own blog website i wish you all the best and i have just one request please comment down below about the learning experience from this video and also please share this video on social media it would mean the world to me i will see you in the next video for now bye bye